Before we continue with this video about Qualweek, I'd just like to uh, thank you viewers for watching our channel. Uh, me and Gida, we have now made 10 videos. This is number 11 and uh, subscribers are almost touching 1000, which might not sound much to some of you, but to us it's great. We are heading in the right direction. And uh, I'd like to mention where we are heading with this channel. Uh, or the original idea was that this would be about our photography and our methods and everything since we, uh, we work as professional photographers selling landscape photos and uh, wildlife photos and using them for all kinds of projects we have and uh, share this with you in a video since video has become a vital part of everything we do. Now. The aim now is to uh, have some of the videos about uh, locations, some of them about techniques, some of them about something we are doing, our project. The goal is that these videos will be about our photography, our methods, our projects, what we are doing. Some of them will be about locations and uh, we will share what we know. I, I don't believe there should be any secrets in photography and uh, sharing information should be open. So this is where our channel is heading and uh, the announcement is that we are aiming to uh, have one video per week, preferably publish a new video every Saturday. So if you don't want to miss out, subscribe. Thank you and let's go on. A little way north of Kopaskir in North Iceland lies a hidden gem that so far has been completely free from tourist crowds and waits to be discovered by photographers. Kvalvík is a small bay characterized by beautiful rock formations in the inland and by the shore. The whole beach more or less is decorated with basalt columns and a short way out to sea is the rock gods Gatastakur that looks a bit like Gatkettur rock at Arnastapi in West Iceland. Few travelers venture here, and indeed there's a barely so much as a footprint to be seen around Kvalvík. As you walk from the car park down to the beach, you will discover various rock formations that have not yet found their way onto postcards and tourist promotional material, despite grandeur on a par with Kvitserkur and other rock arches. It's a good idea to keep a careful eye on the tide as you walk down to the beach. At high tide the footpath is partially cut off, so it's important to stay away in rising tide. The tides make no difference if you walk up along the cliff edge though. From this vantage point you get a tremendous view over the bay of Gatastakur. Wherever you turn you can find sandstone, which makes a beautiful foreground. The stones are delicate and it's important to watch your step as not to cause any damage. Coming to a location like Kvalvík, where you have not been before, is a bit of a challenge because uh, you have not seen any photos from there. And uh, it's uh, challenging to uh, be uh, absolutely without any idea how to photograph this location and that's a very good challenge because you have to get creative and uh, it's uh, I'm gonna show you some uh, of our favorite shots from uh, both me and Gida and uh, it's very difficult to say what shot uh, is our favorite one but uh, I think you get where this is heading uh, when you're above the beach you walk on the ridge uh, 
it's maybe a 20 meters high or something like that. You get a different view of, of the rocks below and over the sea. And uh, one of my favorite scenes is probably when uh, Gila was uh, walking on the cliff, uh, standing straight on uh, above the Gatastakur arch. And uh, I shot some photos there of her on the cliff, but uh, she also shot uh, uh, some of me. And uh, I would say those are uh, among the favorite because uh, she shot a black and white version where uh, I think um, it shows very well how the rock is shaped. It's really a really strange shape. And another shot where uh, you have a wide angle, uh, a little bit on the side, showing uh, the, uh, the beach in the distance. It shows how crazy shape this rock is in. Also, when you uh, come down to the beach, it's, uh, it's different because then you're closer to everything and uh, it's uh, a challenge also to find uh, what kind of uh, compositions you can have. And the strange thing is that when we were there in 2016 for the first time, I believe 2016 was the first time we were uh, photographing there, there was a kind of a, you could call it a cave, because uh, you could crawl under, under a rock there, as they say, and uh, create a kind of a cave feeling. Uh, and have uh, a roof over, for example, Gila standing in the distance and, and the Gatastaku rock arts also. But somehow the weather has uh, destroyed this cave now and uh, it's completely gone. But uh, you can see it, uh, see the remains of it. And uh, it doesn't matter too much because the, uh, for, to us at least there was mostly one motive in, in, in this cave, but um, kind of a miss it though. But overall it's an interesting location and uh, I would say that if you're going to, to the north of Iceland and uh, you're heading east for example, no question go there because there are also many other locations in the vicinity. An easy way to find Kvalvik is to scan the QR code in our book Photographing Iceland to get a Google map of the location. The map is also uh, free on our website photographingiceland.is. But in short, Kvalvik is only uh, 13 kilometers north of Kopaskir in North Iceland. It's barely visible from the road and uh, that probably explains why there are not that many that know about this location. In our next video we find an unknown cave when we were searching for uh, arctic foxes in a lava field. Don't miss out on next Saturday.